What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the sock, you've come to the right place. Six days ago, January 12th, the year of our Lord, 2020 and 2, we talked about Pokimane, specifically how she got banned from Twitch for violating copyright. In just seven days, one week, the situation has devolved into arguments about sexism, because, well, of course it has. Twitter is a bloodbath, everything's in chaos, and you know, at first, I really didn't care, especially since I had just talked about Pokimane a week prior. But I ran into the situation and ladies and gentlemen, my blood is boiling. Originally, I wanted this to be a quick video, a quick record, two or three hours of editing and get it out on the YouTube channel. That was on Tuesday. I am just not recording this on Thursday and the video probably won't be out till Friday morning. The things I do for this channel, man, like I'm telling you, I am going to be a zombie when I go into work tomorrow. So let's get into it. There's this guy, Gideon, popular YouTuber, former Twitch streamer. With everything going on with Pokimane, I suppose he saw it fit to get into some beef with Pokimane. What he did, and I guess it was out of the blue, spur of the moment kind of thing, he got his audience to spam L plus ratio in Pokimane's chat. Follow her right now. We're gonna be back, y'all. We will be back. Oh, y'all niggas already follow her. Yo, what the? Bro, what the fuck? Just know she's making a stick ass face. She's seated here. If you've been on Twitter, you know the meme, you know, where young boys stand, spam it for no reason at all. I'll admit, I find it pretty funny. It's a charming meme, I'll say that. Pokemon reacts to this supposed harassment. If you get banned, I'm nice not shots. gonna be sad. I'm not gonna apologize. You did that shit to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I do actually agree with this bit here. Twitch has been known to be overly anal about harassment, to the point where a lot of the bans they hand out for said harassment feels pretty harsh for what it is. So while what Gideon did really wasn't that bad, by doing this, he really should have expected to get banned. It, like, in all honesty, I don't agree with that, but that's just kind of how it is on Twitch. Yeah, you can get banned for doing shit like that. And yes, My Aerie sucks, crazy. though. I haven't faced Blah. enough harassment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need it from Blah. another streamer. Blah. That's right, guys. Someone spamming your chat with L plus ratio is harassment. So she seemingly takes the side of Twitch. She says you can get banned for it, and yes, it's pretty cringe. So kind of implying that she'd support Gideon getting kicked off the platform and if you think I'm looking too far into it don't worry because it's pretty much confirmed later on you know it's pretty easy to support deplatforming people when there's pretty much a 0% chance that you yourself will ever get deplatformed you know at least with other people who are you know pretty pro censorship one way or another they eat their words they support censorship and they themselves get censored because of something that they did Pokimane though she might get banned for a day or two but she'll never have to worry about getting the boot I mean we're talking about someone who only got banned for two days for breaking copyright law. We're talking national law here, and she got her account reinstated in a snap. I'm from? I'll call fuck when I see it. You think that's bad? Someone rating your chat with L plus ratio, that's effed up to you? Jesus, dude, what do I even say to that? You're soft, and it's frankly pathetic. That's the problem with the internet having the power to make pretty much anyone a celebrity, you know? They get famous, and they can't handle the baggage that comes along with it. By the way, she ended the stream over this raid, which is just hilarious to me. Apparently, it was done because the raid Raiders might harass her fans or something like that. It, it's laughable. I think I'm oh. gonna end stream because- I believe that's how it works, I'm pretty sure. Like, as much as I can deal with this, I don't like that people from his community <laughs> are whispering people on my stream. <laughs> Like, I'll put up with the bullshit, but I don't want you guys to put up with bullshit, okay? Damn it. Like so, according to Twitch, that's harassment, which, I don't know, that kind of makes me scratch my head. I mean, it's not like he commanded his fans to say anything, you know, particularly harmful. It's a dumb meme. To you or me, this is not worth the time nor effort to get mad over. But according to Twitch, it's a bannable offense. 14 days to be exact. I want to stress this, Pokemon violated copyright law and got two days. This guy, he laughed, he made jokes, and now he very well may never stream on Twitch again. And you know, we've seen Twitch do this kind of stuff, they are overly anal about this kind of stuff to the detriment of their own platform. So again, like, Gideon here really should have saw that ban coming. Before he got banned, I guess some of Pokemon viewers went into his chat to defend their queen, and he said some stuff like, you know, Pokemon ain't gonna get jiggy with you, stuff like that. I don't care how many hours you watch her, she's not gonna fuck you, bro. She has a man's. Bro, you, you probably don't wanna hear this. You probably don't wanna hear this. You probably don't wanna hear this. But I'm sorry. I'm gonna break the fourth wall. And spoiler alert, she's getting dicked down every night by another nigga. And he says this a few times during the stream. This is actually just one such example. And I don't know, maybe you could make the argument that he went too far there. And maybe he did. Although personally, and I do stress, personally, 
I don't give neither hoot nor holler about it. Understand, Pokimane is stacked. She's got a lot of money. She pretty much uses Twitch as her own money printer. Well, this to say, is someone telling weird jokes about you on the internet really the worst thing that can happen to you? Is that really gonna bring you down? You are quite literally living the dream. And you expect me to care when people make distasteful jokes about you online? I'm sorry. As far as this whole thing goes, I'm not shedding a single tear for you. So he gets banned and he takes it surprisingly well. Changes his profile picture to Pokemon without makeup, but you know, makes this tweet. On a serious note, I'ma take this L cause what I did really was TOS, you know, obviously violation, right? But that comeback stream is gonna be something pressure. Love y'all boys, banger dropping Sunday. But Pokemon, nah, she wasn't done. So get this, she changes her name to Incel Slayer and then privates her Twitter account. You cannot make this stuff up, dude. What's the deal with people with really aggressive usernames being so sensitive? I see people on Twitter with like adjectives like ferocious and I don't know, like stuff like angry in their name, right? But ironically, they break down if you so much as crack a joke at them. I don't get it, man. But yeah, really sticking it to the incels, man. You're so strong and courageous that you private your Twitter account because someone got their audience to spam L plus ratio in your chat. Regardless, Pokemon goes in for the kill. It baffles me when other streamers don't stand up against blatant harassment or misogyny. Turned off replies, good night, sleep tight, don't let the incels bite. It baffles you? Well, okay, I'll explain it to you. I'll make it make sense. Other streamers are not obligated to talk about your personal issues. Well, issues. I made finger quotes there if you couldn't tell. You are not entitled for people to defend you. It's really that simple. And besides, the guy just sent his fans to your chat and got them to say L plus ratio. But that's sexist. <laughs> Get a grip, woman. Sure, he made a few sexist jokes, none of which were aimed directly at you. And you know, again, they're jokes, who really cares? So she fires up a stream and it really is something. I have no clue how someone who was already harassing me on Twitter for like a week got partnered on Twitch. So what she's saying here is, apparently the guy was harassing her on Twitter for a week before all this went down. And not to uh, victim blame, but if you're letting someone harass you for a week, you don't block them or nothing, I feel like that's on you. And then during their first stream, continued to do that for like an hour, and then got a two week suspension. Like, is that really the kind of partners you want, Twitch? I don't understand. I feel like that's embarrassing, bro. So, you kind of see what she's trying to do here. She's giving Twitch a nudge and a wink, actively trying to get this guy kicked off Twitch. At this point, I don't really care if what he did was or wasn't against the rules, as if what he did was really that bad in the first place. What I do care is that you are so petty, your skin is so thin, that you want this guy off the platform for jokes. Distasteful jokes, sure, but jokes nevertheless. You know, as I grow in the YouTube space, it's possible that hell makes some enemies. We might say thanks to hurt each other, but you know how I would never go as far as to cry to YouTube about harassment, trying to get him kicked off the platform. In the end, I might get mad, upset even, but I'm no fink fink. I've got thick enough skin to deal with it. You should too. And then she brings Ninja into all this. Oh, and the other thing that really disappointed me, seeing him on a call with Ninja and Ninja like allied with him and saying, oh, like, I'll try to make sure your ban isn't too bad. Ninja was actually pretty sympathetic towards Gideon during the whole thing, and to Pokemon, I guess that makes Ninja to Gideon like what Benito Mussolini was to Adolf Hitler. Ninja's crime? Take a look for yourself. What does Gideon need help with, bro? What happened? My whole chat saying Gideon needs help. Oh, to not get banned by Pokey? Professional advice. My man is fucked. Okay, so what a hate rate is, is basically anyone at all. Oh, that's what happened when they, they came in saying all that. L, 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 ratio. Like, that's a hate rate. It, it's, not like, it's not like a racist hate raid, which are, like, obviously the things that they're trying to 100% prevent. But with like the bots, yeah. With bots, but, like, it's, it's, a, it's a negative raid towards someone. My boy is quite literally fucked. If it gets reported, straight up. I mean, I don't even think Pokemon is going to be the one that's going to be my boy to report it. I mean, I'm sure that her viewers are going to do it, and they're... It'll be a small band. He'll be all right. Guys, I can't help Gideon, man. He's fucked, bro. There's nothing I can do. I, here's the thing. is I think he's... Obviously, he's learned his lesson. So, if Twitch sees that, yeah, that might be enough. The help me step, Ninja. Guys, this is I promise you guys, there's literally nothing I can do. There's negative things I can do. I could send him... I could send a text message to my representative and be like, from... Gideon says he's sorry. Uh, all right, all right. I'll, I'll do it. All right. I sent the text. I can't. I don't promise. I don't promise a goddamn thing. Yeah. I need you. I need you to. I need you to set your expectations low. You're fine. 100. You know, percent I'm gonna do whatever I can. But you're fine. Oh no! He tried to get GD on a ladder band. The horror. The horror. 
What are you, some sort of control freak? You gotta have control over who does and doesn't get to stream on Twitch. Does that make you feel powerful, Pokemane? Does Ninja helping out a fellow streamer put your power fantasy at risk? I mean, seriously, this is what I'm talking about. This is petty nonsense. She basically dragged someone who has no involvement beyond talking with someone involved in the drama into the drama. Well, I really can't say that because Ninja never really contacted Gideon directly. Seeing him on a call with Ninja... Though, for the most part, he was pretty neutral. At the end, he said he'd do whatever he could to help him out, which, not really that bad. He's not really making allies with the guy, at the very most, he's sympathetic. Pokemane's making a big deal out of nothing. She makes out as if Ninja's got his back every step of the way when that's really not the case. And even if it was, it don't matter that much. Get over it, man. I guess the reason I bring up the whole Twitch thing is like... If you're going to allow this kind of behavior to one of your most prominent streamers, I can't imagine the type of shit that other female streamers get that might completely go unnoticed or like no action is taken or like little to no action is taken. So fear mongering, that's what she's doing. She's trying to turn this one guy who raided her chat and made a few sexist jokes into a crusade. This is laughable and frankly absurd. Like, I don't know, maybe if you were actually harassed, I might give a darn, but I'm sorry, I don't consider L plus ratio to be harassment. I'm literally out here just wanting to play Valorant or Minecraft on random evenings and my existence is turned into like a gender topics debate. I didn't ask for this. He got his fans to top L plus ratio in your chat and he made a few jokes. I'm sure you'll be able to play all the Valorant you want. I don't think anyone really turned this into a gender debate but you. By all means it was just some guy messing around on Twitch, you know? I really hate that I keep like repeating myself, but I mean I really don't know what else to say when you put everything into perspective this quote unquote drama becomes so insignificant. It's only being spurred on by Pokemane and Pokemane alone. She then talks about the whole deal with Gideon joking about people defending her because they want to have no sex with her. She doesn't really say anything of value here, it's mostly just rambling, so we're gonna skip it. If you really care, you can watch Bo Blacks' video for yourself. Uh, side note, Bo Blacks did a really good job covering this whole thing. Uh, this video probably wouldn't be as in-depth if, you know, Bo Blacks didn't cover it. I really do recommend it if you want to see, you know, the full picture. How I want to know, Twitch? Show me the math for the 14 day suspension. I would just like to know. So there's proof of her pushing for an even longer ban for the guy. It's disgusting, it makes me sick, and frankly it doesn't even make sense. The point of a ban is to teach people a lesson. They mess up, you ban them, take away their ability to stream, and they learn, man, I probably shouldn't do that again. And if they still don't get the message, then you permaban them, because it's obvious that they ain't ever gonna learn. That's how these sorts of things work, that's why we have stuff like three strike rules and stuff like that. There's a reason we do these sorts of things, not that you know because again, you'll never have to worry about a permaban even when you blatantly break the law. Let's try to discourage and stop this behavior one step at a time. If, and if it's not going to start with me, then who? Except the behavior was discouraged. They banned him. They sent GD on a message. They told him, don't do this again or next time you're out. So overall, the highlights of the stream were pretty dumb. You know, I never cared for Pokemane that much. Sure, she did some stupid stuff in the past, but I really thought she done changed for the better. In the past, she copyright claimed content she didn't like and even went after sponsors. Remember that? But we, the community, gave her another chance. And for a while, there was an easy peace. We all got to go back to what we were doing. Everyone was happy. Now she's back to her old ways, pushing to deplatform people that she doesn't like. Despicable. Again, I was mostly indifferent towards her, but the fact that she pulled this is aggravating to say the least. And I don't reckon I'll ever think positively about Pokemon again. Because obviously a YouTuber who has just over 200 subs is going to hold a lot of sway in this course. Gideon then released this statement. We can't change overnight. Looking back, I did do certain things completely wrong. My ideal content is to always put the joke on me, but I put the joke on others, which is going against what I stand for to begin with. I don't want nor need another creator's platform to help build mine. I have a great supporter base to get me further in my career than any beef could, so I'ma be a man and drop it. I don't want to give a full statement here over text. I want to hit it and stay, so I'll be doing one on Twitch once my ban runs out. In the meantime, all my supporters keep all comments and thoughts on my social media pages only, please. I'm gonna move better and smarter going towards the future because the movement is only gonna continue to grow. In the meantime, we'll chill and continue to drop bangers. I appreciate all the support from my boys out there and appreciate the insightful perspective of others that I've affected but are still trying to get through to me in a kind but constructive way. I'm not too stubborn to sit back and listen to genuine criticism. It would only make me better moving forward.
forward. See you in two weeks, and it's bigger than black and white. P.S. The ending part of the message is not a race, but a lyric from my favorite rapper, Chief Keef. Alright. And usually I'm pretty nitpicky about this kind of stuff, but I think this was a good bit. He understood what he did was, you know, pretty mean, I guess, and tried to de-escalate the situation. I'm sure you could criticize the apology. Well, he didn't really apologize. I guess he meant to do it in his, like, full statement. But as far as these sorts of posts go, it was pretty decent. So I guess we all eagerly awaited for his full apology. But after that, his two-week ban got moved up to a pearl ban. No doubt to Pokemane's clumsy and dishonest Twitch rave. I want to put this in perspective. I really do. Pokemane broke copyright law. She streamed Avatar The Last Airbender to 250,000 people. And you could argue she put Twitch at risk of a lawsuit. 48 hour ban. Dijon sent his audience over to her chat and had them say L plus ratio. He made a few sexist jokes and he got he got perma banned. He may never stream on Twitch again. This is unbelievable. Like she has it so good, dude. She gets cut so much slack, and yet she still feels the need to go on the offensive. So Dijon makes the video. I think it's a good video. Very professional. He definitely dialed himself back here. See for yourself. What's up, boys, bro. So a lot of you guys already know I got banned on Twitch. My first day being partnered. If you don't know, go look it up real quick. It'll be really easy to find out why. But I'm not here to talk about why I got banned because I deserve to get banned. It is what it is. I broke TOS. But what I am here to talk about is I'm here to ask Twitch to make it fair. Because when Twitch first banned me, I got a 14-day suspension. But after other people reacted to my ban and voiced their opinion of that not being severe enough, my 14-day suspension went to a perma ban, which I feel isn't fair. I feel that Twitch should keep my 14-day suspension, especially for a first-time offense, and not let outside factors determine, you know, me being perma banned. Uh, obviously, like, what I did was wrong. It is what it is. But how am I supposed to do better the next time if I can never get a next time? So... I ask you guys to go on Twitter and use hashtag Twitch, free on. We're trying to get it trending so we can get back on Twitch because I love the platform. I love interacting with you guys and I miss it. And I will be doing better in the future, but I can't do better in the future if I'm part of my band. So please use hashtag free I mean, hashtag Twitch, free on, And hopefully I can get back on there. Love boys. I honestly feel kind of bad because I really don't have any commentary for this. I agree with pretty much everything. This is all pretty agreeable stuff, especially the part regarding outside opinion. I think Pokemane played a part in getting him permabanned, which I don't think is right. Pokemane ain't an employee of Twitch. What business does she have meddling in someone else's ban? If you're a Twitch viewer cheering this on, you better hope your favorite streamer never gets in hot water and then someone who doesn't particularly like them gets some permabanned because they went on some crusty rant. So anyways, Pokemane boots up another stream to talk more about ninja's involvement in the situation while watching my stream and my chat he started opening profiles of people of my subs and then he addressed the stream hey if you're from pokey stream and you have a penis she's not gonna fuck you she has a man spoiler i I'm sorry, that fake gagging annoys me. I know it's just a joke, but it's like, yeah, we get it. You're playing up an incredibly fake, wholesome personality who doesn't like sex. Buzz off. It doesn't even make sense because Pokemon has made jokes about sex in the past. No one's gonna fuck you either with that stink ass attitude. Ew. She didn't seem grossed out by it before, but I guess she's grossed out now because I guess it helps her spin the narrative. I suppose. Like, I feel weird even saying those words. I am not, like, an openly sexual person. I don't talk about that stuff. And the idea of someone else on their stream talking about it in such an aggressive and inappropriate manner in front of his thousands of young male viewers makes me feel like inexpressibly uncomfortable. And you know, for what it's worth, I think this is one point where I think Pokemane is justified. The way Dijon talked about Pokemane was inappropriate, and I could see why it would make her uncomfortable. Like I said before, I really don't care because we're talking about a millionaire. You know, boo-hoo for the millionaire. Someone said weird stuff about her over the internet. Maybe you don't think financial status should play a part over whether or not I sympathize with someone, but at the end of the day, I'm a warehouse employee who busts ass 12 hours a day. Why should I care about the feelings of a literal millionaire at this point of like recounting everything i just want to clarify i did not ban dijon if he did the exact same stuff to any other streamer he would still be banned twitch would have banned him regardless because it's against the terms of service to do any sort of hate rating. No, 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 you're one of Twitch's powerhouses, one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. You directly encouraged Twitch staff to give him a heavier ban and they obliged. To try and downplay your involvement in the situation, it's dishonest, no matter how you look at it. The next thing I wanted to discuss is actually the reason that I'm revisiting all of this, uh, which is Ninja's involvement in the situation, as well as his manager, 
being very weird to me in my Twitter DMs. His words and actions carry a lot of weight. So when they were used to support Dijon's case, instead of condemning it, he was essentially enabling this guy's behavior, regardless of his intent. He says, this was, this is crusty. I mean, Ninja, again, he was pretty neutral for the most part. At the very most, he was somewhat sympathetic. I also don't know where she gets away with saying he supported him instead of condemning him. Well, here's the thing. People are allowed to have opinions. They're allowed to feel one way or the other about something. I don't know what's so hard to get about that. At the end of the day, Pokemon, you can't control everything. I suggest you get over that. When Dijon was hate rating me, he also sent his viewers to Ninja's chat. Dijon and his viewers really want Ninja to help Dijon avoid getting banned. Ninja then proceeds to joke around about it and tells him, you can't run around raiding bitches on Twitch, which Dijon obviously immediately takes as Ninja calling me a bitch. And Ninja then says he meant bitches generally. I wonder if Ninja would have said bitches if it was a large male streamer that was hate rated, but I digress. Interesting point there, Pokimane. Let's see if it holds up. Play the clip. If you're gonna ratio bitches, and that's not meant to be a Pokemon, and anyone, you stick to Twitter. So there you have it. As you can see, he says it and immediately corrects himself. Keep in mind, Pokemon said that Dijon interpreted that as Ninja calling Pokey a bitch, which doesn't make sense because Ninja clarified his intentions as soon as he said what he said. I don't know about you guys, but I think Pokemon's doing a little line here, trying to make Dijon seem worse than what he is. Plus, like saying bitch, calling people bitches, that's a common term. It's common slang. Yes, from time to time, it's used as a derogatory term for women, but it's also used to refer to people of both, well, all genders, I guess. Frankly, I think he probably would have said it had he been referring to a male. I don't know what she's getting at here. Ninja then keeps joking about it and says that Dijon is fucked, but that he will do whatever he can to help him, but don't expect too much. He then says... The most I can do is text my Twitch representative about this. And then he proceeds to do just that. Why Ninja would help someone evade a ban for harassing me? I have no idea. I genuinely don't know. Maybe to appease Dijon's viewers. But like, has gone as far as to text your Twitch rep? I don't know. Jesus, and I thought I was bad faith. Oh no, he texted his Twitch rep to get someone a louder ban. You're reaching. You are reaching way too hard. Ninja had also retweeted and liked a tweet from Dijon saying, Winja. <laughs> and they followed each other on Twitter. From my perspective, it was just so sad to see like the, mo the most well-known streamer blatantly supporting someone who was harassing me so intensely and so publicly. Ninja left his RT of that up for hours, even after Dijon changed his profile picture on Twitter to me. Crossed on a stick, get over yourself. I'm so fed up with this nonsense. I'm using the Lord's name in vain now. Oh my God, they interacted on social media. The horror, hell on earth. You're a control freak. It's like you want to control who Ninja can and can't interact with. And when he doesn't act according to your will, you throw a hissy fit. So I mentioned this very briefly on my stream the next day. I said, I think what Ninja did was weird, like I found his support of Dijon weird. And, you know, you also misconstrued the situation and made Ninja out to be worse than he really is, which is to say, you know, not at all. His manager and wife, Jessica, uh, DM'd me on Twitter. Finally, she's getting to the stuff that actually matters. About time, because I cut all this out, but like, this whole stream was basically her repeating the same meaningless points over and over. So this is where supposedly Ninja's wife and brand manager comes in, and I will say, she treated the situation very poorly. It's embarrassing that she acted the way that she did. Like her job is literally to represent Ninja and his brand. She is a brand manager and she acts like a complete nut job. You'll see that here. And she says, hey, just want to clarify things with you. Ninja did not call you a bitch. And Ninja told Dijon that what he did to me was not okay, privately in DMs. She then went through the series of events from Ninja's perspective, which is included in how I described it above. She tells me that Ninja retweeted the Winja tweet because he thought that it was about playing Fortnite together, not about the hate raid. And she said he, in caps, never said that he would try to get him unbanned and just not support that. Well, obviously that's straight up not true. The other stuff I don't really care about. It's not that important. But the clips don't lie. Ninja did say that he'd try to help out Dijon. I could send him, I could send a text message to my representative and be like, from Gideon says he's sorry. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll, I'll do it. All right. 
I sent the text. I can't. I don't promise. I don't promise a goddamn thing. Again, doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. At least not as big of a deal as Pokemon's trying to make it out to be. But ultimately, it did happen. To try and deny it is plain dishonest, which ain't something I respect. No, sir. She then sends me the DMs between Ninja and Dijon Mustard, which, to be honest, were so... <sighs> It, it was so difficult to read those DMs because it's just a bunch of thanks for the love last night, man. Like, really appreciate it. Hearts being sent back and forth. And then Ninja telling Dijon that he watched what happened from my POV and giving him advice on how to avoid getting banned in the future. Dijon then tells Ninja, Pokey got me, man. I'm banned for two weeks. Which again, I didn't. I ha like, I have no power in whether or not he gets banned. If he did this to anyone else, he would have still gotten banned. I'm not... <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta say this, I know it's mean, I know it's mean, but Pokemane has a real punchable face. I know, I know that that's really mean, maybe I'm going too far here, but that right there, that is what we call a shit eaten grin. But okay, the text between Ninja and Dijon show that they're friendly towards each other, they're amicable. Oh my god, who cares? What, did you want Ninja to constantly berate Dijon, tell him he's a piece of crap? Again. You're a control freak. And what's so bad about Ninja telling Dijon how to avoid getting banned in the future? Ain't that a good thing? I mean, I assume he gave him advice on how to avoid breaking Twitch's rules, which why would that not be a good thing? That's what you want, right? And Ninja reiterates to him that even though it was just L's and ratios, it's still considered a hate raid with quotation marks around hate raid. So this is probably the 11th time I've said it. L plus ratio is hardly a hate raid. It's a joke. It's funny. In fact, the reason it's so funny is because you're making such a big deal out of it. I mean, it was one raid and you're still bitching and moaning about it. Grow up! And that rules are rules, unfortunately, even though your intentions might not have been evil or bad. I don't know about Ninja, but I don't find the rules against harassment on Twitch unfortunate at all. If anything, I'm really fucking glad they exist. You're twisting his words. He's not saying that he disagrees with the Twitch rules. He's saying that it's unfortunate because he got banned on a technicality. <laughs> Jessica then tells me that Ninja has since unfollowed him and unfavored his tweets. She ended her message by telling me that she just wants me to know the full story and not how select people on the internet have tried to twist it. I'm gonna read you guys my reply to her. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for reaching out. Okay, so notice how she's reading her text directly from the phone. I find that interesting, right? Because she paraphrased what Ninja's wife said, allowing her to possibly spin the story in a way that could be more favorable to her. But when she reads her own text, she makes sure to read it word for word so there's no room to misconstrue it. I think that is dishonest. You could say that maybe she doesn't want to, like, leak DMs in a way, which doesn't really make sense because that's what she does later on in, you know, the clips. So... Uh, honestly, like, this is dishonest. Especially because you must feel responsibility to clarify the situation, both as Tyler's manager slash wife and as a woman who understands the position of what it's like to receive misogynistic attacks. Jesus, it all comes back to sexism, don't it? Seriously, my eyes rolled so hard when that bit came up. However, it would have meant more to me if Tyler messaged me himself. I know we unfollowed each other on Twitter, but he's still able to DM me and I would have appreciated him doing so. I guess that's fair, right? I mean, if there's gonna be an interaction, Ninja might as well miss Pokemane directly, unless the wife went behind Ninja's back to contact Pokemane, which obviously ain't that professional, right? So I think, you know, that that is fair. Even though the public narrative is that Tyler is siding with Dijon, and that this all occurred publicly, on stream or Twitter, Ninja has yet to make any public statement retracting his support or clarifying his stance. Control freak. Unliking the tweet and deleting the VOD, his VOD from that night had been deleted at this point, comes off as if nothing happened to the public. That is something that's pretty sketchy, like Ninja apparently tried to delete clips of the stream and evidence that he sympathized with Dijon. Allegedly, he even tried to get some of them pulled off of Reddit and the like. Now, I'm sure you could argue that Ninja's just trying to, like, get out of the drama, so he's, like, trying to remove evidence of his involvement, trying to pretend it never happened, but, I mean, that is pretty sketchy. Honestly, I really don't know why people try to, like, hide evidence, because it's the internet. The second you say something, do something, it's already been clipped to hell and archived on a hundred different Twitter accounts. If you do something bad, post publicly on the internet, the last thing you want to do is delete evidence because it's not going to work, people are going to notice, and you're going to have to answer to it. You just end up with egg on your face. So I'm going to paraphrase a bit here uh, in regards to her response. Wait, why do you have to paraphrase? I mean, you seem to have ready access to the DMs, why not just read them out? Even if the wife is a loony, it really just seems like you're trying to do everything you can to make yourself look as good as possible and Ninja and his wife as bad as possible. You make sure that your professionalism is portrayed and your points are given in a clear-cut manner, but meanwhile you completely gloss over the other dame's message. That's sketchy. She reiterates that Ninja never said that he would get him a lesser ban and never reached out to anyone at Twitch, and then she says to me, It's unfortunate that the exact thing I speak about hating 
other people making assumptions off of me is what I'm doing to Ninja right now. Not wrong, by the way. Ironically, even though Jessica is all but lying here, she's not exactly lying about Pokimane making assumptions. That's pretty much been this whole ordeal. And all the YouTube re-uploads, if there were any from Ninja's POV, all gone. Like, nothing is left on the internet from that night. Okay, well, obviously not everything was deleted because we saw the cliffs. Her message then ends with her reiterating that they know nothing about the other things Dijon has done to me, aside from the L plus ratio spam in my chat. And that Ninja denounced what Dijon did publicly on his stream. Now, this is weird to me because in my last message to her that I read out to you guys, I told her many of the things that Dijon did to me. And they also can see that his Twitter profile picture is me. And Ninja was mentioned in this incident all over the internet, so it's just kind of hard for me to believe that they have no clue what happened. Especially because I told her what happened. Okay, so yeah, I, I will say that is a point for Pokimane. A rare Pokimane W, as the kids would call it. It is pretty hard to believe that Ninja ultimately doesn't know the full extent of Gideon's actions. And again, for the 54th time, it really doesn't matter. Talk about snatching defeat from the jowls of victory, dude. Like, the way Ninja's wife goes about it, it's so sketchy, even though you could easily argue Ninja's in the rat. The way she's playing it makes his case, like, that much weaker. Like, this dude has done so much to me. And you're just like, yeah, let's play Fortnite when you're unbanned, bro. It was like just trolling, like just L's. And so much to you. He said mean thanks about you on the internet. Not exactly a laundry list you got going on there, Pokimane. And oh no, Ninja wants to play a game with someone that you don't like. That's unacceptable, because clearly you're in control of Ninja. You can tell him who he can and can't interact with. Oh wait, uh, actually, no you can't. Mind your own business, Fink. I cut up the 12-hour VOD so I could send this to her and say, again, look, this thing you keep telling me didn't happen, it really did happen. This is the message. Here's the clip of Tyler texting his Twitch representative to pre prevent Dijon from getting banned, as referenced in the Reddit comments, as well as a clip of Ninja saying to Dijon, I'm going to do whatever I can, but you're fucked. And this is what she says to me. She responds by reiterating the series of events from Tyler's POV, how, the ev how that evening he only knew about the hate raid and nothing else, and that at this point, it's four days later. This was yes, it's four days later. And they still don't know any other specifics about what happened to me. Aside from, she says, a viewer of his saying something about me being dicked down. Which I told her myself that Dijon said that on his stream. This was not a viewer that said that. She then ends her message by telling me, that Ninja never said he would get him a lesser ban and never texted a Twitch representative. Yeah, Ninja, I don't know. You gotta get yourself a new brand manager, dude. Your wife, I don't want to attack her credentials, but she is not making you look good at all, man. I mean, literally denying what everyone can see for their own eyes. Like, if your wife was working like anywhere else, she'd be fired, and rightly so, because this is honestly crazy. I really think Ninja was on track to get out of this, you know, relatively unscathed, but then his wife came in and messed all of it up. This is like one of the only times where I can say, Pokimane is, without a doubt, in the rat. Talk about a blunder, dude. I don't even so much as care for an apology from him or his manager at this point. I just felt so cornered and pressured by someone telling me that certain things didn't happen when they very clearly did, and saying that I'm lying when I'm showing them proof, and I just wanted this full situation to be properly and publicly documented and recorded so that no one can lie about it in the future. And see, that's what happens when you don't play your cards right. Because the wife handled this so poorly, it enables Pokimane to further victimize herself and actually have a valid reason to do so. You've essentially given her a leg to stand on. She's on crutches when previously she was pretty much in a wheelchair. Then during the stream, Ninja DM'd Pokimane personally. He says this, Hey, so I just want to let you know, I swear on my grandfather's life who just passed away that I didn't text my Twitch rep, and you are making a big mistake. Which, I don't know, maybe he's telling the truth, I don't believe it. I don't know, maybe this could hold up in a court of law because you can't, like, disprove it, right? And ultimately, you know, the burden of proof lies on the accuser, I suppose. But in the court of public opinion, I'm sorry, this is not a good look. I don't know, it's, pos it's possible he's telling the truth, it's not likely. I don't want to be intimidated behind the scenes anymore. Please leave me alone, please. I'm doing this because like, I don't want to hold all this like stress and anxiety from people saying stuff to me behind the scenes. Like you're making a big mistake. This never happened. Like, just leave me alone, please. Or say you didn't mean it and move on. Like, that would be fine. Okay, you don't really get to say that. You don't get to be all, leave me alone. 
You were the one who dragged Ninja into all this in the first place. I don't know where you get off begging him to leave you alone because you were literally the one that got him into this mess. Frankly, you were the one who really made this situation bigger than what it really was. I, like, you don't get to say, oh, leave me alone, I just want to go back to playing video games. Maybe don't make a mountain out of an anthill, y you know? I can't confirm what happened on your phone, but you acted like you texted your Twitch representative on stream and then... You said you did. You said, oh, what's her name? And then you were on your phone and you said, all right, guys, I sent the text. If you pretended to do that, but you didn't actually do it, okay, but you still pretended to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I f in my opinion, that's such an irrelevant detail. Wait, huh? I don't get the point. I thought the problem here was that he was actively trying to get Gideon a louder ban and texted his Twitch rep to do so. On the off chance that Ninja's telling the truth here, I'd say there's a huge difference because that would mean, well, you know, it didn't happen. Like, Jesus, you just don't want to let Ninja off the hook here, do you? Like, don't tell me that you didn't do it. Then say you pretended to, but didn't actually do it. Kim, I said you are making a big mistake. By being honest about what happened? Oh, give me a break. Being honest about what happened, you're getting cocky. You got one up over Ninja, and now you're getting cocky. So after that dumpster fire of a stream, Ninja's wife pulls the ultimate. Incoming wall of text, which I will not be reading because that's boring. The DM reads out, We are considering everything defamation of character at this point, and are getting our legal team involved. You are spewing lies to tens of thousands of people. You know Twitch. You claim you know his rep. Then you know from them that Tyler NEVER reached out to anyone. And AGAIN, just said that to stop the harassment in his chat from Gideon's viewers. We have clarified everything to you. You are actively bringing harassment to Tyler and I right now at the highest level, and we are taking this very seriously. Thank you, Bo Blacks. So, this is crazy. Now, I doubt this is actually going to court, God forbid that it does, and you know, frankly, it's one of those cases where even if you're in the right legally, no one's gonna side with you, like, publicly, because you're blowing this so out of proportion, trying to strong-arm Pokimane into shutting her mouth and, you know, basically giving her a leg to stand on. You're giving reasons for her to victimize herself. You're making her look better than she actually is. This is ridiculous. Like, what do I even say to this? At the end of the day, internet lawsuits are, like, they're taboo, you know, you just don't do them. Like, under any circumstance. Like, you have to have a damn good reason at the very least, you know? Pokimane makes this tweet. I think Jessica's trying to say that Ninja pretended to text his Twitch representative, which I'm willing to accept and cannot disprove. I just wanted to let the clip out there to show what happened. And then Ninja says, all will be explained. Now, uh, this tweet was apparently deleted, so who knows if all will indeed be explained. You know, I guess we'll just have to leave it to Tom. But good god, it's over! There might be some stuff I missed because it's an ongoing ordeal. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's been some tweets that have been made that I didn't really cover. And I can, I can do that in the future, you know. But that's most of the story cleared up and my opinions have been conveyed. I am so ready to wrap this video up because editing this is gonna be a pain. Overall, I think what this situation proves is that Pokimane hasn't changed one bit. In the past, Pokimane has gone after people's sponsors and flagged people. She said she'd change, but it's clear to me that she will do what she can to take you down if she don't like you. Don't let her wholesome personality confuse you because if you get on her bad side, she'll do what she can to bury you. You know, she's extremely petty, you know, encouraging Dijon to get banned because he was mean to her. You know, that that's really what it is at the end of the day. He was mean over the internet. Oh no, mean words on the internet. Pixels on a screen. Boo hoo, boo hoo. She's smart though. I think she knows what she's doing. You know, she knows how to, you know, rally public opinion against people, and it's working. I think most people on YouTube kind of disagree with her, but on Twitter and Twitch, you know, she's definitely getting a lot of support. Especially from, you know, mainstream, you know, kind of like celebrities, you know, internet celebrities, right? And to those people, I just want to say, well, you guys got to be careful. If you're supporting this, you better, you better hope that you never get on the bad side of someone who can get your ass banned, you know? Because here's the thing, Pokimane, she's got immunity. You know, she can call for people to get canceled with no risk to herself, right? But you're not so lucky. You know, you might eat your words someday. You yourself might get banned for doing something that can technically be construed as wrong. You know, so yeah, be careful. Yeah, you know, you might think it's good PR now, but you're gonna end up eating your words, you know? Like, I'm actually, like, keeping track of all the people who are, like, supporting Pokimane right now, because when they inevitably have to eat dirt, you know, they get banned for doing something bad, it's gonna be so funny to pull these tweets up and be like, hey, you reap what you sow, you know? But yeah, Jesus, I'm done here, man. I've spoken for way too long. This video is going to be an absolute pain to edit. Like, ah, Jesus, man. But thank God it's finally over. Now to spend more time than I should editing a freaking Twitter spat. I mean, seriously, L plus ratio harassment. Jesus, give me a break. That's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.